If you live in Alberta, you should be very worried about Bill 81. And if you live out of Alberta, but still in Canada, you should be very worried about Alberta Bill 81 because it sets a standard for other provinces. Bill 81, 2021, was proposed by the UCP government as a way to block foreign influences in our election. It has a pretty good veneer of legitimacy. So let's hear a little clip from Casey Maddu, and then we'll go over and we'll explain what it actually does because it's not the same thing. It would allow only those who live in Alberta to contribute to election advertising during an election period. And only those living in Canada to donate to political advertising at all other times. These changes would prohibit other jurisdictions from unduly influencing Alberta elections and ensure that only those who have a real stake in the, in the outcome are involved. There it is. It stops people from outside the province making notable donations into our province. There's some logic there. That makes sense. However, like all such law, the devil is in the details. And man, this has a lot of devil in it. Mr. Maddu forgot to mention some really nasty changes that Bill 81 brings to Alberta and will likely bring to other provinces. Because again, it sets a standard. There are half a dozen egregious things in here, but we're only going to focus on three to keep this short. The first is with this legislation, someone else could buy a membership in your name. What? One member, one vote is the guiding principle of all democracies. That's no longer the case in Alberta. This change so very clearly invites fraud and abuse by those with money and political experience. In the, the last few elections, there's been scandal after scandal relating to people who voted for someone who didn't realize that they were even registered. On its face, it is improper. So perhaps, you know, maybe when you get a closer examination of the details, there's some redeeming quality. Nope. In November 2021, the Elections Commissioner in Alberta looked into the matter and ruled that this term is in breach of the Elections Finance and Contributions Disclosure Act. The second thing this change does is eliminate contribution limits on nominations. Mostly, unlimited funds are really effective for new candidates who really need to define their own brand, regardless of their actual history, but it's even more useful for someone else who needs to hide old nastiness because you can just flood the market with ads and promotion. And the third change that's in here that really just, you just shake your head at, sounds a little complex, but it's actually very simple. Constituency associations, you know, your local writing, do not have to keep contribution records. And you think, well, I guess it's not that big a deal. Well, it sure is, because after a nomination is done, unspent money gets moved to the central party. So that means that the central party will have no idea, well, they'll be able to claim they have no idea where the money came from, and they'll be able to spend it on whatever they want. So for instance, that means if you give a million dollars to say, Jason Kenney's constituency association for his nomination bid, he can easily just transfer that money to the party, which will spend it on any riding or on any issue they want. And you'll have no idea where the money came from. Basically, the local ridings are now washing machines. Let's take an extreme example. Let's say the Hells Angels wants to support, say, again, Jason Kenney, in exchange for political favors. They could give, say, Devinder Tour two million bucks for his nomination race. Mr. Tour could just hand it to the UCP party. And there's no tracking on this. The UCP can then spend that money on anything they want. And that, of course, would be on what Jason Kenney wants as the leader of the party. A more likely scenario is one in which a developer, say, wants some provincial support for a project. And when I say provincial support, I'm talking about things like, you know, an off-ramp built or something else, or a company needs to have some expensive regulations go away, perhaps some environmental regulations. And how can they do that? Well, they just make a giant donation to a nomination. And then that money gets funneled into the party and the party spends it wherever they want. Now, you might think I'm picking on Jason Kenney, and I suppose because he and his party are the ones that brought this in, that's a fair assessment. However, like having a handgun in your house, you're more likely to shoot yourself with it. And I think this is the case here. When the NDP get in, or the Liberals, or the Alberta Party, or the new United Alberta Party, they're going to use these rules to their advantage. And it's likely to shoot the UCP party in the foot, or maybe even the head, and have catastrophic results. So now you think, well, who would vote for such a horrible bill that so invites and just begs for fraud and corruption? 
Well, it turns out the entire UCP party, with the exception of six people, everybody you see here, which is everybody, the exceptions were three MLAs who weren't allowed to vote. They were required to abstain because of their positions. That leaves three actual UCP politicians who voted against it. Leela Ahir from Chestermere Strathmore, Dave Hansen from Bonneville Cold Lake, and Richard Godfrey from Calgary Fish Creek. So you might say to yourself, hey, I haven't heard much about this or probably anything about this. How could this be? Yeah, well, it's Christmas, so people have other priorities. And a new COVID variant is scaring the heck out of everybody. So the media is focused on that. In short, Bill 81 2021 fixes some small problems in Alberta and creates some massive ones in Alberta. But also, as I said, this sets a standard for the rest of the country. Put simply, wealthy elites and corporations will be able to legally buy elections. And you won't even have the right to know who those people are. They can just stay in the stinky shadows. You need to get a hold of your MLA whatever their political stripe and say, hey, I want this overturned and in the next election, this is going to be an issue. But as it stands this minute, at 3 a.m. Wednesday, December 8th, 2021, that bill became law in Alberta. Welcome to America. We'd like to interject for just a few seconds and ask you to click like, and if you like this type of thing, please click subscribe. Both of those things make a huge difference in the Google algorithm. We mostly talk about electric vehicles, the energy industry, and high technology. And we take on both sides of issues. We try to stick with facts. Thanks.